Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to those people who are new here. Today we're going to be doing another painting tutorial <coughs> of Lake Louise, which like the last tutorial that we did is also in Banff National Park. Um, Lake Louise is one of the more famous lakes in that area. Um, and it's done with dollar store paints, uh, dollar store canvas, dollar store brushes, um, just to show you that you don't need to spend a lot of money, just to have some fun painting and be able to get some good results. So in this video, I'll go through all the processes, all the mixing. I'll show you the paints and the paintbrushes that I use. And then I hope that you can have some good results like I did. All right, so if you've ever painted with me before, especially landscape paintings, you'll know that I like to start from the sky and you work your way to the foreground. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the sky up top here. Work our way through the mountains, the trees, the lake, and then the front pine tree. Um, so similar to the last one that we did of Lake Moraine, we're going to do just a nice blue sky. And so I'm still using the same paints I did before, just these cheap paints so that you don't have to go out and spend a lot just to have some fun with some painting. Um, so we have some Pacific blue here, similar to cobalt blue that we'll be using. And then we have some sky blue just a lighter blue. You can also just use some white with the Pacific blue and that'll make a similar one, but it's easier to use this, this guy blue because I have it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this into my palette here. And the brush I'll be using is this one. One, it's number one, because it's one inch wide. Just a flat one, just bigger for blocking in areas. All right, so just grab that blue onto your brush and just start putting it in. All right, so I've come down a little ways. You can see I've got some marks on here. On this side, this mark is where the mountains are gonna come down in, and I've got another one on this side. And then I've got marks here where the tops of the peaks are so we know how far down to go. Um, with the sky. So I've come down a little ways. I'm gonna get some of that light blue now and start putting that in because as you work your way down, if you've ever looked at a horizon, it's gonna get lighter as you work your way towards the horizon line, towards the land. And so we'll put some of that sky blue on the palette here. Put some of that on your brush. I'm gonna start right in the middle here, and as I go, I'm just gonna work my way back up, and then that'll blend it in with the darker blue that we already have here. There's something on the brush. There we go. You can see it blends it as you just work your way horizontally back up into it. You can work your way down a little bit. If you want to make it even lighter at the bottom there, as we're going down, you can grab some white. If you have more expensive stuff, as I've said, it's called titanium white. All right, so I have a little bit of white on my brush there. And just the same idea, we're just gonna work our way back up. I'm going in a little bit to where the mountain will actually be, just so that when we actually are doing the mountains, then it's easy to overlap, and you're not trying to just draw along the line, which never turns out very well. All right, so there's your sky. Pretty simple. Just a gradient down from darker blue to light blue. So I'm gonna wash off my brush, mason jar, my favorite thing to use for a water jar because I don't drink out of them. All right, rub that off. And I've just got some rags here. Dry it off a bit. All right, so the first step of the mountain will be the back part of the mountain. And if you looked at mountains, a lot of them are kind of a deep purple in the background. So 
We're gonna use some of that Pacific Blue I still have on the palette. Mix in some Holiday Red. You can use a Cadmium Red Medium for this if you're using more expensive paints. Just any red to make purple. And then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of black as well. And maybe, maybe a little bit of brown. We might try a little bit of brown. You can use a bur burnt umber. This is called espresso. Just kind of a medium to darker brown. And that'll keep it more of an earth, earth tone purple that we're going for. All right, so we're putting a little bit of each on the palette. I would like to use a palette knife for mixing. Makes it nice and easy to scoop it up, mix it around, push it wherever you need to. And even when paint dries on it, then it just peels off. All right, so we got some blue. Mix in some red first here. Let's add in some black to really darken it up. You probably, well, you'll need quite a bit because we're going to be blocking in a lot of the mountains here with this color. All right, so if you can see on there, a little bit blue hint to it. So we're going to add a bit more red into this mixture. A little bit of blue is okay too. I just like it to be a bit more purpley. All right, so that's mixed, same brush, and we're gonna start blocking in. So we'll start, I'm gonna start on this side this time. I've got my mark up here where the mountains come in, and they come in down to a point right there. So I'm just gonna draw this up to there, and then start boxing this in. We'll go back afterwards and touch up any of these edges or peaks if we need to. All right, so there's the base of the mountains. Now we're going to go in with some lighter colors to add in some highlights. Um, in the reference photo that I'm using that I took last weekend, this mountain on this side and a little bit of this side are uh, have a little some more shadows in them. The back here at the far end of the lake was pure sunlight. And then the front of this mountain here where most of the trees are on it was also in sunlight. So that means our highlights won't be quite as vibrant and bright. So with that dark, dark purple that we just used, I'm gonna bring a little bit off to the side, add some white into it to make it more of a medium color. And I'll use that same brush for now. And this mountain over here has a lot of cliffs on it. So I'm gonna go vertical and just start lightly dabbing in these cliffs, giving it a bit of texture. And the reason I'm stopping about right here is because that's where um, there's a little ridge in front and trees are covering it. So we don't need to worry about that. And then same with this side. And there's a few spots in the back here. I'm just gonna add a bit in, um, but we can work around with it as we go. All right, so I added a little bit more blue to it and a little bit more black. So we're gonna add in just a few more in there. It'll just give it a little bit of a different hint of color, which will add some layers to it. All 
All right, good enough for now. Most of the mountain that is in the sunlight um, has a lot of, it's a very tan color. So I'm gonna get some brown, mix that in with what I've been working with so far. A lot of brown in there. If you can see the color different, uh, difference there, you can see that there's, it is more brownish. And I'm going to bring out this other little brush. And I'm going to use this for putting in a lot of um, the highlights now. So we got some of this brown on the end of our brush here. All right, so that's that. Now we wanna get, again, a lighter um, highlight. So we're gonna add some white into that mixture that we have going on here. And if you want to, you can just kind of rinse off, not even rinse off, just scrub off the end of your brush <clears throat> with that darker highlight that was on there. Got some of that lighter, and we're gonna go one more layer with the lighter on this mountainside that's going to be in the shade. All right, so there's our highlights on that side. We'll put the same in over here. All right, continuing adding white, making it even lighter. And now what we're gonna do is we're not gonna be doing the highlights, especially there, and a little bit less over in here. Down in front though, it still is in the sun. So right here, there's a mountain peak behind that's um, has sunlight and in front it's not, so that's why we're kind of creating this fine line here. And then there's a little bit of a shadow right here where the cliff stops. And then it goes back into sunlight. We're going to be adding quite a bit of snow into this top part, so that's why I kind of left the tops of the peaks dark, because we'll, we'll get there. Alright, so we're going to add some white another time here. Um, I need to put a little bit more on my palette. Alright, so we have another layer of lighter. Mm, I think I need some more brown in that. Alright, let's try this. I'm gonna rinse, actually rinse this brush off. When you start working with lighter highlights, any dark paint left in your brush can really have an effect on it. Alright, that's rinsed off. Get some of this light and we'll start right in here. Got those highlights that we want for now. Again, rinse off your brush because we're now we're going to be putting in some snow. And when we're using pure white, we don't want 
the other colors to mix into it and get in the way. Alright, so with the pure white, I have some on the end of my brush. I'm going to add it in first right along the top here. And I'm still just, just dabbing. So there's our light, white, white highlights there. Uh, I feel like I need a bit more brown. Lost, lost a bit of the brown highlights in there. So I'm gonna go back with some of that brown that I had before and redab a bit over top. I feel like I, I we kind of lost that look of the rocks in there. So we're gonna add that back in. The reason I'm leaving some of that blank too right now is because we're going to be adding some trees into there, so we don't really need to bother covering it. Alright, I'm going to go back into this set a little bit with those darker highlights. Just add a bit more in there. anywhere you want to touch up with snow. I feel like I needed a bit more over here. A bit more right on top. All right, so there's base of the mountain so far. Now we're gonna start working in some trees um, to fill in. And so for the trees, we have some pine green. We will be using a bit of this brown. We will be using some bright yellow and some black. So I'm gonna put some of this on the palette here. Rinse off my brush. We're gonna be using that same brush. So I'm going to get some black and this green. It's going to make a really, really, really dark green. That's what we want. And now we're just going to go in. Since these trees are really far back, we're going to have it horizontal. Turn it horizontal, or kind of diagonal, I guess, with the, with the mountain. And we're just going to start dabbing in. Where, where our trees would be here. Right here, that's a ridge that's gonna be a lot closer to us. And so that means the trees are gonna be taller, more visible. So I'm gonna turn my brush um, vertical. And we're gonna do that same. We're going to cover most of this area actually with um, with this dark brown. So if you really want to just scrub it in, that that works perfect. And that'll just block in where our closer trees are going to be. And they go right down to the bottom of the lake. So if I didn't go down all the way with the purple, so I'll go down all the way now to right where the lake is. And then same on this side. This is all going to be dark, dark brown or green. Thank you. 
The trees that are in the background over here are also in the shade. And so we're gonna add a little bit of a little bit of blue to that dark green mixture that we have going on there. And then dab in the base of those trees. A little bit more blue. And these ones you can dab in. All right, so now I'm gonna rinse off the brush. I'm gonna take some of just the pure pine grain, nothing else in it, and start dabbing that in over top of the dark darker spots here. You don't want to cover the whole thing or else putting in the dark to begin with would be worthless. Grab some of this yellow. Put some of that on the palette. It's probably too much, but that's okay. And we're gonna grab some of this green, some of the yellow, mix it together, and now we're gonna use that. start dabbing this in over top of that same area. The reason we don't use white to blend is that just mutes the, the color, but by using yellow, it keeps the saturation to it and helps us get that proper lighter tone that we're looking for. We're gonna use that same color and go um, vertical here. blue. I added actually a little bit of that purple that we had mixed in there before and we're gonna add a little bit of this onto the shady side. Those are just gonna kind of be the patches. There's some patches of clear land on the shady side. So that's what these are. shady side in there but then up front like I said before this part is all bright so I'm gonna get just some of the pure pine green and dab a bit of that down into here right touching the other side and then get some of that um, pine green mixed with the yellow dab a bit of that in too. Most of it is grass in here, um, but there are a few pine trees along the along the shore here and just a little bit further up, so that's why we're adding this in. Alright, so we're going to keep on going with these lighter highlights here. 
mixing in some more yellow that pine green and just a hint of white just because I actually do want to just dull that color mute that color a little bit so we've got that here we're gonna just continue dabbing that in all the way down to the shoreline here and then we're going to want to do that same thing all through all through here These front trees here will have a bit more shadow to them because you actually will be able to see the full thing, not just kind of the tops like here. So we are going to add in more full looking trees, just heavier dabs. Reaching down to the shoreline. And then of course on top, making sure that there's enough light. All right, so there's our trees. Now we're gonna add a little bit of grassy patch in there. And for that, we're gonna use some of this holiday green if you are mixing to get this type of green. Um, what I would suggest is some phthalo blue and some bright yellow or some cadmium yellow light. Um, as that will give you a nice bright, bright green. So we'll take some of this. And I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow with that as well. Rinse off my brush because I don't want to get that too much of that dark green in there right now. Alright, so we'll take some of this. Add some of that yellow. And then we'll kind of just dab that into here. And it should be a different looking green than what we've used up to here. You know, more of that green grassy look. I just added a bit more yellow to it just to lighten it up a little bit more for some highlights. And then if you wanted to add a little bit of that along that shoreline, there's nothing wrong with that. That to this tree here too, just because I feel like it. Okay, simple enough grass. Now we're going to add, there's a little bit of shale in along the shoreline there. So for that we're going to use this cashmere tan. You could just use a burnt umber with um, a little bit of white into it. It's just a light brown. Rinse off that brush I was using. So we're going to take that light brown. We're actually going to add a little bit of white with it. And just a hint of black. And we're going to add that into the shoreline here. more white to it. We're going to dab that in to kind of create that shaley looking area. And then use that lighter one along the shoreline here too. 
if you go a little bit too far down, it's okay because we'll, we'll cover up that bottom with the water. All right, simple shoreline. Now we're gonna jump into the water. So unlike Lake Moraine, um, there actually was quite a bit of a reflection on Lake Louise. So we're gonna try to do some of that here. So our reflection will mainly be this front mountain coming down this side mountain coming over and a little bit of the back in right there um, but a lot of it will still be a turquoisey color because that lake was very turquoisey um, so for that I do have just some turquoise we'll be using some of that Pacific blue that we had before we'll be throwing in a little bit of this holiday green and then we will be using a bit of that light brown um, as well to get the highlights of that reflection there. Um, but what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with just some turquoise and some blue. Because most of the mountain reflections themselves, or themselves are turquoise and kind of a light, or that dark blue. And then where the sky is, we're gonna get more of that light blue into there. Alright, so this is just turquoise and um, the Pacific blue, the darker blue so far. We're going to bring that back all the way into here. Once you kind of get it blocked in a bit, you are going to want to make your brush strokes more horizontal, as that's how the, the water ripples would look. And then it's going to come all the way down. Same thing on this side. Kind of starts right in there. And then in the middle it's gonna be a lot lighter with some of that lighter blue in here. Still I'm leaving the turquoise that's in my brush just just mixed in there, that's fine. We're not trying to get a perfect reflection. trying to show kind of the shadows in there. Put a little bit of white in there too now. And then especially a lot of white right in here where the mountain white would be reflecting in. And a little bit of brown. So 
and I'm just blending in the sides, just kind of working my way back and forth. I added a bit of darker blue again into this and some turquoise to kind of blend this over. I'm just trying to take away any really hard edges. I feel like I need a bit more turquoise, so I just grabbed some. Then at the very back, we want it to be a bit darker. And so I'm going to grab some of the dark blue. And even a bit of that purple that we had before. and bring that down a bit. And then along the shoreline over here, got a little bit of that pine green, a little bit of turquoise, and some blue. I'm just gonna bring that down a bit. The closer you get to the front, or to the right side here, the bigger those shadows are gonna be. So I feel like this lighter stuff needs to come over just a bit more. So I've got some light blue and some turquoise. I'm gonna stand this up again. I'm just gonna start here, see how it fits. A bit more white to it. There we go. And just start blending that. In. Oops. Still got some dark on my brush, so I'm going to wash that off. Dry it off. So I really don't want water on my brush right now. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of pure white here on the brush, and we're gonna add it to the edges of the shoreline here. We're gonna start at the back, just slight touches. Dab and drag. That's gonna just help show <clears throat> as if the water was kind of rolling up against Sure. 
and same with this side. If you wanted to, you could do the lake similar to how um, it was done on the Moraine Lake tutorial where we didn't really do a reflection at all, we just worked with that Pacific blue and the um, turquoise all the way down. The day that we were here in the morning, there was this reflection, but later in the day, I um, actually couldn't see the reflection anymore, it was just a turquoise blue um, all the way through. So. If you want it to be simpler, you can just do it like that all the way through and not worry about this light reflecting part uh, in the middle. Um, if you walk along the shoreline at Lake Louise, there are some pine trees. Um, so we're going to add one of these pine trees into our right side here. <coughs> and it's just going to be right up front. And so what we're going to need for that, we're going to need our brown, a darker brown our black, our light brown, and then our pine green and our yellow. So I'm going to get some of that darker brown and the black. mix it together to make a really dark brown. And this tree is going to go right through the top of the painting over here. The stump is going to start just a little bit in here. I'm going to start it uh, right, right about there. This looks very, very black. There is some brown in it. And it's going to go all the way up to the top. And since it does go through the top, we don't need to worry about doing like a little uh, peak of the tree. I'm just going to flip this <coughs> to get this other side straight. Alright, then we're going to take more of just the brown itself. There'll still be a little bit of black in there. We're going to just dab it up. white to that. Then with that white added to it, we're going to just do the exact same thing. And then do that one more time, add a bit more white. And then this is going to mostly be on the left side of the tree as our light source here is coming from the left. Alright, so there's our <coughs> tree, the base of it. I'm going to rinse off the brush. Now we're going to work similarly to as we did in here where we're going to start with a really dark um, green, mixing our pine green and our black. <coughs> a bit more pine. 
fine grain on the palette. Alright, so we have our dark dark. These are going to act as our shadows, so we're going to start at the top here. As you know, pine trees usually get wider as they go down, but they aren't uniform, so some parts will be wider, and then it'll get thinner, and then it'll get wider again. Alright, so there's the base layer for the pine tree. Now we're going to grab some more just pure pine green. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to start at the top. Dabbing over top of what we did before. Alright, so that's another layer in. Now we're going to add some of that yellow to it. Go back in, doing the same thing again. And I added just a hint of white. I'm gonna wash my brush off. I'm going to add um, to the pine green and some yellow, just a little bit of a hint of white, just to make it a little bit lighter. There's our yellow. Most of our pine green's contaminated, so add a bit more in there. Alright, so this dust pretty light, and these are going to be our final highlights in here. They're not going to be quite as thick as the other ones, they're just going to be mainly towards the ends of the branches where the sun will actually be. Alright, there's your tree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in and add a few highlights that I feel like are missing. In the back here, I feel like we're missing a little bit of dark, kind of like we have up there. So I'm just going to get some of that pure pine green and add it in between some of those. Alright, the last little highlight I want to touch up is just right on the top of this peak. Just using some white and some of that light brown. Alright, so if you want to sign your painting, you can sign it right down in here. Um, I would recommend using one of the colors from the painting here, like a dark green or a dark brown or something. That would fill it in nicely. And then if you like, would like to as well, you can take this opportunity to paint in the edges. Uh, I like to use also a color from the painting, like dark green or a dark brown. And then that makes it kind of frame itself in if you're using a stretched canvas. And then you're good to go. Thanks for joining me today with, on this painting tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it, that you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments or send me a message. If you went through the tutorial and love to see your results, either in the comments or send me a message with a photo, it's always fun for me to see other people's results. <clears throat> and if you missed the last one, um, click on the button above and you'll be able to do a little tutorial. Um, of this one, this is Lake Moraine, which is very close to Lake Louise, also in Bath National Park. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future tutorials 
future time lapses and other art videos that I do. So thanks for joining me here on Brian Sloan Artist. <laughs>